Did you know playing a healthy dose of puzzle games is actually good for you? Which is why I'm gonna go take a look at the puzzle games on the Sega Genesis, columns one and three. Addictive and ancient, Columns is the game of a bygone era, originating with Phonikin merchants. Align puzzle pieces to build columns and bring them down. Easy to play, yet challenging to master. This is a game to keep you amused for hours on end. You will quickly understand why this simple puzzler has stood the test of time. Prepare to lose yourself in this game of the ancients. Yeah, I doubt it. Now, without even playing Columns 1 and 3, by the way, this is Tetris 2 on Super Nintendo, we can probably assume that the two games play similarly to each other, if not the same game. So that's why I'm going to review the two games in the same video. I think that's a pretty good idea. So that's two columns without Columns 2. Which is kind of weird. Where's Column 2? Why is it not in this collection? What happened to it? Now, the reason Columns 2 is not on this collection is because it was an arcade game, which explains why it isn't on the Sega Genesis. It was only released in Japan titled Columns 2, The Voyage Through Time. It was eventually released in 1997 as Sega Ages Columns Arcade Collection on the Sega Saturn. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at Columns 1 first. Columns 1 is a pretty typical puzzle game if you have played any basic puzzle games. You know, line up three blocks and they explode, line up some more blocks and make a chain combo. The only thing different in Columns is that you can't rotate your piece around, but instead you flip your block's position, which feels... awkward, since every other puzzle game plays and controls like Tetris, where you can rotate your pieces as a whole. But let's not judge it too quickly. In exchange for lack of rotation, Columns does do something I don't ever recall seeing, and that is destroying blocks diagonally. That's different, and it brings in a different element of strategy in puzzle games, since typically when you destroy a block in other puzzle games, it's either vertical or just horizontal, and never sideways. You don't see that in many puzzle games, and I think I know why. From my playing experience, it would probably complicate strategic placements of your pieces, because now you have to worry about if you will accidentally blow up your pieces sideways. That's pretty much what Columns 1 has to offer in puzzle mechanics, but as a game, it's pretty lame and boring. I'm not saying that Columns 1 is bad, it's an okay game, but I'll explain why I think it's boring. The reason I say Columns 1 is lame and boring is because it doesn't offer much for a puzzle game, or for a single player game. All you do in most of the game modes is to survive and get the high score. Whoa, playing for high scores! What an amazing motivation to play a game, huh? No, not since the Atari, no one has cared about high scores since then, unless it did something. Sure, there's a two-player mode, but you're not playing against each other, which is just boring. But there is one game mode where your goal is to figure out how to destroy a specific block on the screen. Which is fun while it lasted, but it didn't last very long. Overall, Columns 1 offers very little and what little of it is bland. Sure, the game is nice to look at and listen to, but when it comes down to it, the gameplay is just bare minimum and doesn't do enough to warrant a recommendation. So no, I don't recommend Columns 1. Not recommended. Now what about Columns 3? Same game, but better! Columns 3 is the final game in the series of fast-moving puzzle classics, as in the other games in the series. Match colors of dropping objects in order to remove them from the playfield. If they rise too high, <laughs> good job. The game is over. Columns 3 adds multiple versions for strategic additions to keep the game fresh and exciting. This is the puzzle game that started it all. So, not Columns 1 that started it all, but Columns 3. Three games later, it started it all. Good job, manual writers. After Columns 1, I really didn't expect much from Columns 3, but boy was I wrong. Right from the intro, something definitely feels different. Columns 3 is so much more lively and so much more engaging, I can't believe it's the same game. 
It looks a lot better and it sounds just as good as the first. Even the mechanics have been updated to have exciting puzzle battles and I am just so shocked by what they have done to this game. Unlike in other puzzle games where you have to stack your blocks to make it explode into a combo attack, in Columns 3 you can store your attack and unleash it whenever you think is the right time to do it. Which is incredibly cool in what games like Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo Stupid should have done instead of waiting for the stupid glowing jewel to appear. Speaking of jewels, they have different jewel types that have various effects to help you. The game offers a very interesting and very challenging single player, much like Kirby's Avalanche or Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. But, you can earn and use items in this mode to help you battle against the computers as you try and go through this pyramid to find treasure. Columns 3's single player just tramples over Column 1's 3 gameplay modes like Godzilla going through San Francisco. Go check out the Godzilla vlog I did with Ninja Raptor. Rawr. Oh yeah, they took out the three previous gameplay modes, but hey, if you have one really solid game mode, that's pretty much all you need. Quality over quantity. Speaking of quantity, of course you also have the multiplayer mode that goes from two player versus to five players. What the fudge? When I think all the way back to the Genesis and Super Nintendo, having more than two players seems like a crazy thought, let alone an odd number of five. I mean, the system only has two ports, so how do you fit more? Well, I mean, if the NES has the four score, then what's to stop the Genesis from having one as well? What, five players? How do you have five players playing the game on a single screen? Well, I tried looking up five player footage, but no one has five player footage of this at the time I was looking. Which I'm surprised that no one has recorded this because I really wanted to see what it looks like, but to keep the video short, what's my final thoughts? I have to say, I definitely recommend Columns 3 if you ever find it. Recommended. It's a lot more fun than the first game, and if you ever get a chance to try that fly, 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 five player mode, record that and show me, because I'd be very interested to see how that plays out. But until then, stay tuned for more from WizWare 100. Sega Genesis that I got when I was in America. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry for calling you my dumbass in my Splatterhouse 3 LP. Dude, you mean, you mean this, this whole thing right here? Oh, it's just Ultra J, man. Mm -hmm.